So we have just literally just had the Scary Files event and at that event we saw the brand new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros with the M3 Pro and the M3 Max inside of it. But earlier this year we actually got the M2 Pro and the M2 Max like I have right here. So how much of a difference are we getting only about eight or nine months later comparing say the 16 inch macbook pro with an m3 max compared to the m2 max well there's only one way we're going to find out and that is by doing an m3 max versus the m2 max review of specs in the 16 inch macbook pro and with that let's get started so then on the left side we have the 16 inch macbook pro and um, this is with the m2 max and then on the right side we have the macbook pro 16 inch m3 max now straight away a lot of you guys will go well yep you can configure the 16 inch macbook pro with an m3 pro and the same with the 14 inch macbook pro you can configure that with an m3 max but at the end of the day just to keep it simple i'm just going to say 16 inch macbook pro for this comparison here today and i will be making another one with the 14 inch with an m3 pro and that's coming very very soon but let's get started anyway so first of all we have the display type we have the mini led pro row motion display that's got first introduced actually in the iPad 12.9 inch with had that M1 chipset inside and this came over to the MacBook Pro 14 and 16 inch and this is inside both of these models here so there's no differences there and in fact you're going to see a lot of this including the screen size here they're both 16.2 inches they're exactly the same screens there's no differences between both of them and what that means in screen resolution is that the actual screen resolution comes at three 3456 by 2234 for both of these models so like i say no differences whatsoever there on the resolution and what that means for pixels per inch it's 254 of them or 254 ppi so it's a very very good display and very very close amount of pixels in a sort of square inch per inch so yeah that's really really good to see and then also we do have that display refresh rate which goes up to 120 hertz up down to one hertz and that is really good to see here and obviously with the m3 max now with those gaming capabilities too that's really going to help out here with the m3 max to go up to 120 hertz then with the brightness and true tone you can actually go up to xdr 1000 nits so this is the standard brightness on these displays but if you do have say hdr content or you're recording in hdr and you're editing that you can actually go up to 1600 nits with that what's really really good and then both of the displays are actually both true tone too so then for the actual cores and processor cpu cores and things like this things are very different this time especially with the m3 max so for the first time we've actually got a choice of a binned version or a non-binned version for a max chip so you can actually choose between 14 to 16 cpu cores compared to just the 12 core option we had with the m2 max now the m2 max came with four efficiency cores or four e cores and eight performance core eight p cores whereas this time round like I say with the M3 Max you've got 14 or 16 cores and that gives you again 4 efficiency cores, 4 E cores and you can choose either 10 or 12 P cores or performance cores to give you that extra leap in performance which is absolutely incredible to see and it's the same for GPU too there's some big changes here so we've actually got more additional cores again so instead of the 30 to 38 cores we could get with the M2 Max we now have between 32 to 40 cores we can have with the GPU with the M3 Max and obviously you've got all those extra bits and pieces like ray tracing and things like this too and then for the actual RAM amount we've got the standard 32 64 and 96 gigabytes of RAM here with the M2 Max but Apple have decided to sort of semi change the laws of physics a little bit with RAM allegation at the normal two complements but it's not actually happening so we've actually got 36 gigabytes of RAM starting out for just the M3 Max you can get a 48 gigabytes 64 gigabytes 96 128 gigabytes those last three configurations that's back into normal uh, sort of ram amounts that we normally know about in two complements but yeah the ram amount has gone up the highest now is 128 gigabytes up from that 96 gigabytes that we had before with the m2 max that's absolutely incredible to see that too 
Then for storage amounts, you can actually configure both these machines with 512 gigabytes. So if you actually went in for both these models and configured them actually with a say an M2 Pro or an M3 Pro and then made them up to say an M3 Max or even an M2 Max, you can keep that storage the same at 512 gigabytes. So obviously, if you do one of the pre-configurations already, what Apple give you, it'll probably most likely start at one terabytes for the Max models, but you can actually go back. But enough of that you can also go up to eight terabytes of storage there's no differences here on both of these machines then for the actual ports they're exactly the same again three times usb-c ports and also magsafe 2 what's really good to see again and then also you've got hdmi 2.1 sdxc card slot and that basically means that's your sd card slot so the same amount of ports on both of these macbooks then moving over to the operating system you've got mac os 14 so Noma. And obviously with the M3 Max and the M3 Pro, you might get an extra year of support out of this on average. But on average for both of them, you'll probably get around about five to six years of support, whichever one you buy right now. Then moving over to battery life, it's up to 22 hours, what is really good to see again. Especially the M3 Max is obviously far more powerful than the M2 Max. But yeah, Apple managed to retain that same battery life in both of them. And 22 hours battery life up to that is brilliant that's easily a full day's life of battery that's really good to see for the actual charging wattage both of them charge at 140 watts and you get that standard charger inside the box and that's with a magsafe and that's usb-c to magsafe but obviously you can also still charge it with a usb-c to usb-c end you can use one of the usb-c ports on the macbook to charge it via that way too then moving over to the actual weight of both of these MacBooks, they both come in at the same weight at 2.16 kilograms. And this is with the M3 Max. So you actually have the M2 uh, Pro and the M3 Pro. It's actually slightly lighter, but again, the M3 Max also is a tiny bit more heavier than the M2 Max, but it's hardly nothing again. We're talking like one or two grams. I'm not even going to talk about that here because you're not going to notice it at all. Then the actual stereo speakers, both of them have spatial audio in them for that stereo speakers and they're brilliant one of the best sort of sound configurations in a laptop right now and they're both exactly the same in both of the configurations there then for wi-fi they both have wi-fi 6e inside of them we don't have wi-fi 7 yet for that m3 max mainly because m7 or wi-fi 7 sorry is still quite a new technology so it's not been rolled out just yet probably maybe next year when we get the m4 pro and the m4 max we might get it in those machines but then for the actual webcams, they both have a single lens webcam at 1080p here. It's the same camera we've had since the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. They're really, really good. And then obviously the M2 Max and the M3 Max newer engine inside that also makes the picture a little bit more clearer too. Now let's move over then to the price. So prices actually have, as it were, slightly increased here for the M3 Max on the US website. So with the M2 Max, if you actually select say, an M2 Pro option uh, um, with the lowest spec and then sort of manually updated it yourself, not the pre-configurations that Apple offer you, and selected say 512 gigabytes and also the standard 32 gigabytes of RAM two, then you would actually get with that lowest M2 Max, it'd come in at 3,099 US dollars for the 16 inch MacBook Pro. But this time round, if you actually select that 512 gigabytes uh, option, like I said, for getting have an M3 Pro and configure it yourself to the lowest spec M3 Max you can get with 36 gigabytes of RAM. It actually comes in at 3,299 US dollars, and this is the lowest amount of CPU cost. It's a 14 core CPU, and also the lowest amount of GPU cost too. So it actually is about $200 more. And I also say based on those prices, that obviously it depends on where you are in the world, the prices could be higher or lower than this. So it depends on how much your currency is against the US dollar. At the end of the day, Apple have to make the same amount of money no matter where they are in the world. So depending on that and depending on import taxes and other taxes too, it could reflect on the price in your country. Then finally for colors. Colors have changed as you might have noticed in this presentation but funny enough it's still only two colors available for both these models. So with the M2 Max we could actually get with the 16 inch MacBook Pro we could get either the silver 
or the Space Gray. And what's happened here is with the M3 Max, Apple have just moved along. Instead of having just silver, they've also got Space Black. So no more Space Gray, we're Space Black now. So that is the brand new color and you can see it right here. This is the brand new color, Space Black black now so sadly they don't give a space gray option too but i guess it was too similar to silver which is a slightly darker tone where space black really defines it as its own and with that guys will you be buying yourself a new macbook pro and there we have it guys as you can see the main difference is all about that m3 max what a big difference we are getting in performance this year and obviously with the ram configurations and things like that too but still the m2 max still holds up very very well even only came out say nine months ago but it is still a great mac but like i said overall and design wise as you've seen today there's hardly any differences whatsoever and i would probably say if you own say an m1 max or let's say even on the m2 max there's probably not much point upgrading to the m3 max unless obviously you might be doing a bit more gaming on it as we've seen today but honestly i would probably say it's probably not worth the upgrade in that sense but on that note as well guys it's time to wrap up this video so if you have enjoyed watching it please do press the like button also i'd love to know your thoughts too on the m3 max and also the m2 max in the comparisons in the comments below but also if you want to hear the latest on Apple news reviews and further comparisons with latest MacBook information as well then make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell until next time guys I'll see you really soon take care bye bye